First, this is going to be a shorter video. Also, I usually stay away from making videos on one particular system, preferring rather to talk about a wider scenario and other factors that play into it, but I really want to go into more detail on this particular system. I'm sure most of you know what it is. The Pantsir is a short-range air defense system, using both guns and missiles to defend an area. This may be subjective, but it looks awesome. It's armed with 12 missiles, specifically the 57E6 missile, a short-range missile with a range about 20 kilometers. It also has two guns firing 30mm rounds at a rate of 2,500 rounds per minute. The gun has an effective range of around 2 to 3 kilometers. The system evolved from the Tunguska, a similar short-range air defense system which performs a similar role. That is to defend against low-flying aircraft, helicopters, drones, and cruise missiles. They have also played a role in defending longer-range air defense systems, like the S-400. One thing that makes identifying them much more difficult in satellite imagery is that the system can be mounted on a few different trucks of varying sizes. Be it the MZKT-7930, the Ural 5323, the Kamaz 6560, and the tracked GM-352 chassis, among others. The system can track targets with its own onboard radar, or with its electro-optical tracking turret, giving it a much better chance at detecting, and therefore intercepting, targets, including low observable targets like that of the US JASM cruise missile. When it comes to short-range defense, having a fast reaction time is of the utmost importance. Modern-day cruise missiles fly extremely low to the ground, minimizing the ability of the enemy to detect them. In many cases, this leaves the Pantsir with less than a minute to respond, and that is exactly the situation the Pantsir is designed to operate in. Its radar completes a full 360-degree scan every two seconds, and the newer, double-sided radar can scan 360 degrees every second. It can then track a target in as little as two seconds and engage it. So far, the system has only been confirmed to have been used in Syria. It is claimed to have shot down a Turkish recon aircraft in 2012, numerous drones in 2017, and that it shot down 23 NATO cruise missiles during the April 14th strike carried out by the US, British, and the French. As I talked about in a past video, that last claim is skeptical. Unfortunately, as all the missiles were said to have targeted just three sites, it's impossible to fully determine and therefore dismiss. Unlike the strike a year earlier in 2017 at Sharad Air Force Base where Russia and Syria claimed that only 23 missiles hit, when you can go on Google Maps yourself and count many more than 23 individual impact sites. Although I have to admit, I would be surprised if they did not shoot down anything, especially considering the Syrians knew when the strike was coming, and that whole ridge line near the main target is lined with air defenses including Pantsirs. Other events in which the Pantsir was involved include Israel's airstrike on the 10th of May 2018. Israel released footage of it hitting a Pantsir during the strikes. The strike raised several questions about the Pantsir's capability. Syria responded by saying that the system was reloading. And granted, it was in a strange spot at the time, in the middle of a runway, when all the other air defenses in the area are located just south of that position. However, I did find an image in Google Earth from September 2017 showing a vehicle on nearly the exact same spot on that runway. The resolution is too low for me to positively identify, maybe someone better at doing this could let me know, but it could be a Pantsir, which could indicate the location is a place it's been positioned in the past. But either way, you can see in the video Israel released that the radar is not turned on. So this cannot be solely used to judge the competency of the system. And just recently, a story came out in the arsenal of the Fatherland magazine by, and forgive me if I butchered pronouncing this name, Viktor Murakovsky, a Russian military expert and editor-in-chief of the outlet. He discussed the problems that the Pantsir had with tracking small, slow-moving objects, like UAVs, and also reportedly began tracking false targets like large birds, which confused its operators. He also stated that Russia's airbase in Syria, from April through October, the Pantsir S-1 performed poorly, intercepting only 19% of targets, compared to the Tor missile defense system's 80% success rate. Shortly after, Victor was reportedly forced to take the article down. This is believed to have been done on the orders of the Russian government. 
If true, and just because the Russian government actively works to keep stories like this quiet, does not mean the weapon is junk. No one likes bad stories out there about weapons. While they might take more steps to suppress stories like this, negative stories come out about US weapons too, whether it's problems with the F-35 or anything else. But the Pantsir is a big seller for Russia. They have exported several hundred of these systems to countries like Syria, Algeria, the UAE, Iraq, and others. Negative stories can have an impact on their ability to sell the system to other countries. Either way, it is quite an impressive system, and really does not have a counterpart anywhere else in the world. There are a few systems that have somewhat similar roles, like the US Avenger for example, but nothing quite like the Pantsir in terms of its flexibility 